Welcome to Macroeconomics Lecture 3. This lecture will cover supply, demand, and the market process. The supply and demand graph has to be one of the most famous pictures in economics, and we can gain a great deal of intuition by using supply and demand analysis. Supply and demand models simplify a complex system of consumers, firms, and governments. The supply and demand framework make real-world events more analytically manageable. We will start by taking a look at the law of demand. The law of demand refers to the economic relationship between the price and the quantity of a commodity that consumers demand. The principle states there is an inverse relationship between the price of a commodity and the quantity of it buyers are willing to purchase. That is, if the price of a good increases, all else constant, we should observe a decrease in the quantity that consumers want to buy. This law can be demonstrated graphically by plotting various prices and their associated quantities that consumers will purchase at those prices. Consumers want to pur purchase less of a commodity as prices increase for two reasons. First, they will tend to purchase goods that are close substitutes, and secondly, they have less real income as a result of a price increase. Let's take a look at a graphical demand curve for the coffee bean market. We'll use a coffee bean market to illustrate the law of demand that we covered in the previous slide. First, the y-axis, or the vertical axis, will indicate various prices of a commodity. The x-axis in economics indicates various quantities of a commodity. The blue curve in the picture below, also known as the demand curve, represents various quantities that consumers are willing to buy at each given price. In this example, if the price of coffee is $170 per ton, consumers in our fake market are willing to purchase 50,000 tons of coffee. As price decreases, consumers are willing to purchase a greater quantity of coffee beans. One concept related to the law of demand is consumer surplus. Consumer surplus is a measure of consumer welfare, and it is the difference between the maximum price consumers are willing to pay and the price that they actually pay. So if you're a roaster in a coffee market, and you're willing to pay $200 per ton of coffee, but the market price is $170, then your consumer surplus is $30. The green area in the diagram below shows a total consumer surplus for our market with a price of $170 a ton. That is, it is a difference between the maximum amount consumers are willing to pay and the actual market price added up across all quantities sold. One important characteristic of demand curves is called the price elasticity of demand and it measures the responsiveness of consumer demand to changes in the price of a commodity. Elasticity refers to the percent change in a quantity demanded that results from a 1% increase in the price of a good. A high price elasticity means that we will observe a large decrease in the quantity demanded for a given increase in price. Conversely, low price elasticity, also known as inelastic demand, means that there is a small decrease in quantity demanded for an increase in price. Commodities with close substitutes, such as fruits or vegetables or different types of meat, tend to have more elastic demand curves as consumers can substitute to close alternative commodities. One important distinction that we need to make is the difference between a change in demand, which refers to the left or right shift of a demand curve, and a change in quantity demanded. A change in demand refers to a shift of the entire demand curve, whereas a change in quantity demanded refers to movements along the curve that result from price changes. Next, we will analyze some factors that influence demand. Consumer income, the number of consumers in a market, changes in the price of related goods, or changes in expectations, are some of the major factors that influence demand. For consumer income, demand tends to increase or shift to the right if consumer incomes increase. Their, their purchasing power increases, and as you can imagine, people are 
generally more willing to buy more of a good as their incomes increase. Also, if the number of consumers increases, then we also tend to have an increase in market demand. Again, another shift right of the demand curve. Next, if the price of a substitute increases, demand for the original good should also increase. However, if the price of a complement, which is a good that is consumed with the original good, increases, then demand for the original good should decrease. Finally, if consumers anticipate a future price increase, they may increase their demand because they are trying to avoid paying higher prices in the future. Also, factors such as demographic changes and changes in consumer tastes and preferences can also shift the demand curve to the left or to the right. Now that we are finished reviewing the law of demand, we can start into production theory and the law of supply. First off, we assume that producers want to maximize their profits. So what is profit? Profit is the excess sales revenue that you have relative to your opportunity cost of production. The opportunity cost of production is a sum of the opportunity costs of resources used to produce a good or service. It is equal to the value of the production of other goods sacrificed as a result of producing the good. A profit indicates that a producer is adding value to resources. Consumers value the good more than the total economic costs of all the inputs used to produce it. However, a loss indicates that there is a deficit of sales revenue relative to the opportunity cost of production. A loss is generally punished by the market and causes businesses to fail, and it also indicates that value is actually being taken away from valuable resources. In order to finish our supply and demand analysis, we will have to get into the law of supply. The law of supply states that there is a positive relationship between the price of a commodity and the quantity of it that producers are willing to supply on the market. Higher prices increase the benefit or the re reward that firms get from selling their products. Firms and suppliers will want to increase their production as a result of the higher prices. The supply curve represents prices and the associated quantities at which firms are willing to supply at those various prices. Like the demand curve, we can see it illustrated in the chart below, except that it is upward sloping and to the right. The curve represents the minimum price required for a firm to sell one more unit of the commodity. However, it also represents the opportunity costs of the last unit produced. In the example below, we can see that if we read this chart horizontally, at a market price of $80, all the suppliers in the market would be willing to supply 20,000 units of the commodity. However, if the market price increases to $200, suppliers want to increase their production by 15,000, giving us a total quantity supplied of 35,000. As we did for the law of demand, we will want to st study some factors that shift the supply curve to the left or to the right. Changes in resource prices. As prices of factors of production increase, suppliers are willing to, to supply less at each price. Supply decreases and our supply curve will shift to the left. Changes in technology. Innovations and new equipment leads to lower production techniques or lower cost production techniques, which will tend to increase the amount that firms want to supply at every price. Also, if we have changes in natural resources, such as uh, natural resource disruptions, supply shocks can decrease the market supply through droughts or natural disasters. And lastly, changes in taxes. Increases in taxes will reduce the willingness of suppliers to sell at every given price, and this will generally cause supply to decrease. 
Now we can complete our supply and demand analysis by looking at how they determine market prices. Although the forces of supply and demand seem to be conflicting, the market price will eventually move toward an equilibrium in the long run. So what is an equilibrium? It is a point of rest whereby the price is such that the quantities that consumers wish to buy is equal to the quantity suppliers wish to sell. It is a point of balance. And market prices tend to increase or decrease until these quantities are equalized. In the diagram below, at a price of P star, the market quantity demanded and supplied are equal to each other at quantity Q star. The price mechanism of markets moves to eliminate shortages or surpluses in their respective markets. So if there's a surplus, suppliers are supplying a larger quantity of a commodity than consumers are willing to purchase. So producers will have to lower their prices to sell off their excess inventories. This increases the quantity demanded, but it also decreases the quantity that suppliers wish to sell. If there's a shortage, on the other hand, consumers demand more of a commodity than producers are supplying, so demanders will end up bidding up prices and causing a reduction in quantity demanded and an increase in the quantity supplied. Finally, we will take a look at how shifts in supply and demand ultimately change market prices and market quantities. For example, in the market below, an increase in demand will cause a new higher equilibrium price and an increase in the equilibrium quantity. You can see that as the red demand curve shifts to the right, perhaps consumer incomes are increasing. Our price increases from P1 to P2, and the quantity increases from Q1 to Q2. An initial shortage for the price being at P1 will put upward pressure on the price of the commodity. Suppliers will want to increase the quantity that they supply to the market, while consumers will decrease the quantity that they demand relative to the old price.